to all after the first four matches. We're up for the uh, third men's single. Here is uh, how it's happened so far. Denmark got ahead through Victor Axelsen, but then Germany uh, took the lead in uh, two close victories before Sogard and Christiansen won the second men's doubles convincingly. Here is the two uh, players who's going to decide the winner of this team tie. Hans Christian Solberg, Bittinghus from Denmark and Matthias Kiglitz from uh, Germany. Bittinghus who uh, won the uh, decisive match in the Thomas Cup final back in 2016 against uh, Indonesia. Here he is, 35 years old. Ready to uh, go all out for another victory for Denmark is uh, Hans Christian Wittinghus. Characteristic uh, black compression stockings. And here's his opponent, Matthias Kip Kiklic from uh, Germany. young German talents and the uh, twist to this is that Kiklitz has a uh, Danish mother, his mom Hela Anker is Danish and used to play for uh, Gentofte badminton club um, in her younger days, now married and lives in uh, Germany. And his son has become a promising young badminton player. First time they meet. On the right, sir. I think Moose chose to start on the far side of the court. And uh, he says, Whitting Moose, that this is what well, he's uh, practiced for for uh, approximately the last one and a half year. As you can see, 34 years of age and uh, born in Frederickstown in uh, the northern part of uh, Jutland here, but lives in the uh, Copenhagen area. Currently ranked 20th, has been as high as uh, eight back in um, January 2015. Here is uh, Matthias Kiklitsch, you can see he's born in Gentofte in Denmark, but uh, represents Germany. Just trying to make his way in um, international badminton, therefore the uh, low ranking of uh, 580. Hasn't been a whole lot of tournaments to participate in, only uh, 19 years of age, so he's been playing a lot of junior badminton. Here's our service judge, Shomus Holping, and the umpire is um, Daniel Wolf from uh, Austria. Kiglitz uh, is the European uh, junior champion in mixed doubles together with uh, Tukpong Nguyen. And he also got a bronze in the men's single and uh, lost uh, last year's uh, semi-final to Christo Popov, whom uh, some of you might have seen if you follow Denmark's uh, Previous match against France, Popov took uh, Victor Axelsen two, three games in that um, semi-final at the European Juniors. Kiglitz um, lost with um, 18 and uh, eight. Lives in uh, Bushen, or at least his parents live in uh, Bushen. I think he might be uh, living closer to the uh, Mulham practice uh, center in uh, Germany. And uh, the uncertainties here is how good is this um, upcoming young uh, German player and what kind of shape is uh, Hans Christian Wittinghus in because um, it's been a while since um, he's played. He played in the European Championships in uh, Kiev. Uh, won a, a bronze medal. Lost the uh, semi-final to um, Antonsen. 
just before Anton's and won the title by default as uh, Victor Axelsen got uh, uh, COVID. And, uh, hasn't played um, since then. I thought actually he played in the uh, Denmark Masters. I'm just going to... No, he hasn't played. Ladies and gentlemen, on the right, so what kind of shape is he in? Can he get his game going? Then he's the favorite, but we've seen sometimes that um, he has uh, been struggling uh, occasionally. And um, if he ends up in that department, then it's, um, it's going to be difficult. Smash from uh, the 19 year old. And another thing I would be concerned about if I were in the Danish uh, team camp is uh, injuries. Um, Bittinghus has suffered quite a bit of um, injuries or his fair share of injuries, so to speak, and he can't afford, afford one today. Then um, Denmark is going to lose for the first time ever to. Uh, Another European nation. That's a great smash, though. Brings memories back on uh, the Thomas Cup final when he beat uh, Mustafa in the uh, decisive match. situation in the uh, group here in group B at um, Thomas Cop Denmark won their first tie against uh, France and uh, Germany lost their first tie against uh, Korea who should lose this match, then Denmark will still stand a chance um, of progressing, um, depending on, uh, no matter what the result is between uh, Korea and France, but um, depending on the result, there will be different scenarios for Denmark to still progress out of the uh, group stage. We saw earlier today, Indonesia, uh, struggle against uh, Thailand, 1-3-2. Uh, One of the things that should be uh, in favor of Wittinghus is the uh, raw physical strength. I mean, Kiklitz is just 19 years of age and uh, cannot be as physically strong as uh, Vitti News, but if you keep producing uh, these uh, net shots that rolls to the Danish side, then uh, he will eventually get the advantage. Really? 
Oi, missed it. That's a very good smash by uh, Wittinghus. The short uh, trigger stick smash. Opportunities to power his way through the youngster. We got a little bit too casual with that one, Vitsi uh, Horse, that had uh, great quality the recovery shot from uh, Kicklitz. Second man singles when he defeated Rasmus Gemke, being very successful playing these cross net shots from uh, his forehand side. and beating who's because uh, he did play it uh, in uh, the first match Germany uh, played here at the uh, Thomas Cup two days ago against uh, Korea. He lost to uh, John Hark Jin in uh, third singles and incidentally John Hark Jin was the one beating who's uh, defeated in his uh, only uh, Super Series victory Back in 2016 in Australian Open, he uh, took the title by defeating uh, John Mark Jin in uh, three games. But uh, so far, the advantage with uh, Kiklitz. to uh, penetrate and it doesn't look like Wittinghus is entirely comfortable uh, on court not really um, playing to win anything here but playing to defend and make sure that Denmark stays undefeated against uh, European teams
just looking very passive on the front court, uh, Vincent Hoos. That one is uh, placed well, though, even though Kignit sacrificed himself. Interval is coming up here for both players. Now they've got some experience of uh, the other. The coaches have seen how the uh, match unfolds. He's just missed that one. Keep this, but the uh, challenges. placement and uh, two-point advantage for the 19-year-old here at the first mid-game interval. Shot totally uh, surprises uh, Wittinghus, and the way that Wittinghus walks around on court is not encouraging for Denmark because um, the look that he has is um, not the um, look he had back in uh, 2016. He's um, I think battling with himself at the moment, battling with uh, confidence. That's important. That's an important rally to be able to penetrate the defense of uh, Kiklitz, who has, in my opinion, played brilliantly so far. Really, really uh, clever play by uh, the German. Not made things more difficult for himself than uh, necessary. Much better. For a beating horse. Easy to uh, give uh, suggestions from up here when you've seen the rally and uh, sitting here with uh, lots of power in the legs and uh, no shortage of uh, breath. But uh, why try and go uh, precise when he's just hammered two attacks down on uh, his opponent? That's well played. Keep 
Pirates have, of course, got to try and neutralize the attack, or at least uh, make sure that uh, that's a great defense from Bittinghus. At least make sure that the Dane cannot uh, be as dangerous as he's been in the last uh, three, four, five rallies. I know he missed one on the, the sideline that uh, was too sharp, but um, it's Bittinghus with the momentum here after the interval so far. That's a good play. Excellent play. So far, Wittenhus has uh, sort of won the battle with uh, himself, if there's ever been one. So maybe it's just uh, me that's mistaken. Maybe, maybe it's the look of uh, deep focus. Fifteen all. Shot we've seen all day. 4 since uh, the interval and he should have picked up on the fact that a lot of the attacks from uh, Matthias Kittgitz is uh, directed at uh, his own backhand side and so it's turn good smash and now it starts uh, looking familiar from uh, Witting, whose variations is, uh, has arrived in his game. is to have a chance of uh, creating a sensation then it's important for him to win this first game seven straight points for Wittinghus and now five game points Uh, 
that was a mob on court which he was, was ready to to play on and uh, I have to revise my uh, read on uh, Bitsinghus from uh, the interval I think it was pure concentration and as he's starting to um, feel get, get the same feelings on court like he had in uh, 2016 Beautiful play, and the defense of uh, Kiklitz has uh, suffered here in the second uh, half of the first game. The attack from Bittinghus is uh, penetrating uh, the German players' defense. So in uh, 20 minutes of play, 21-15 for Bittinghus in the first game. Det er Precis. Vi was alert to uh, the good flat cross from uh, Kiklitz's uh, forehand to his own long forehand. Apart from that, um, I think he felt uh, rather confident on uh, what was coming from the opponent. That's well played. Well, it's interesting if uh, Kiklitz is trying to uh, take more control of the front court. Here in the uh, second game. Quick, quick cover shot. So important to have a variety of shots to prevent the opponent from moving forward to the net. The Kickers was able to uh, get it all the way to the back court in. Uh, Totally full beating was that the shot that's really really good. But uh, no, now he should be alert to it beating who's he should be able to punish it. That's a good shot, similar to the one Kiglitz has from his forehand side. Again, beautiful placement, the stick smashes, the steep, short triggered uh, shots are working well for Bittinghus. There was a couple of uh, mistakes in the uh, beginning of the first game, but uh, that's a long time 
gone now. Service over. so to speak. But this is a situation he hoped would um, occur that um, Denmark was um, at two all and um, a win was needed. who's with uh, excess confidence, excess energy at the moment. And I have to uh, eat my words from uh, just after the interval in the uh, first game. I read the situation completely wrong. and you're 35. And I don't think that uh, Denmark can afford uh, injuries. Good replay, kick it. Just waiting for it. Pressure that uh, he wasn't able to uh, sort of play uh, a neutral shot. That's a good shot in the rally from him. A little deception there. You know, sometimes the chance is gone, and you just have to sort of accept it and take your medicine and uh, play on. Make sure you uh, don't convert a positive situation to an immediate loss. Satisfied with the development, gets kind of young this as well. Beating who's up 11 4. And, uh, 
becomes alert to the fact that um, Kinkitz might want to try and apply some more pressure on the front court and just play it over him. Two, three good shots, good attacking shots to uh, win the rally. for Denmark when he uh, won the decisive victory for Denmark in 2016 the uh, score in the final game was 21-7 Could it happen again? Surely it couldn't. Seventeen six four beating who's He asked Kenneth Jonasen if he was allowed to uh, celebrate a little bit, and Jonasen just said no. Finished the job. And it looks very much like that match. It could be the exact same scoreline. Could be the exact same scoreline if uh, Kicklick scores one more point. That would be exactly the same as the Thomas Cup final. There's the point. Will history repeat itself for Wittinghus? Wow, that's, that's an attacking, uh, that's an attacking Dane there. So, 13 match point opportunities. And he missed it. It's not going to be the exact same score line. Eight, 
match, Christian Witzinghus has uh, secured the win for Denmark in the match in the overall tie. An almost similar scoreline to when he uh, secured the Thomas Cup for Denmark back in 2016. Back then it was 21-15, 21-7. Matthias Kicklitz did one better today. He started out so well, the young German, but uh, Witzinghus uh, found his form and uh, this is what he was uh, practicing for during uh, the Corona crisis. I'm certain of that and you can see that uh, he's thrilled. And uh, now he's got to quickly uh, pick up his uh, kit bag and put a mask on. Here is confirmation of the score. 21-15, 21-8 in uh, 34 minutes. Yeah, he's not allowed to leave without his uh, mask on, says um, service judge. So, they were under pressure, Denmark, but uh, still managed to uh, get away with the win. And not really uh, close in the three matches that Denmark won. Here's the final point. Victory for Bittinghus. Victory for Denmark. And that means that um, they've uh, set up a uh, final playoff for the uh, group win against Korea in uh, two days time as Korea have um, defeated France the match is not finished yet but uh, Korea has already got three uh, individual uh, matches and the winner of um, that match will hold one of the seats for the knockout phase. Here is how it happened. Victor Axelsen put uh, Denmark ahead. Lamsfuss and Seidel equalized and Fabian Roth in a fantastic uh, fight defeated Rasmus Gemke and put Germany 2-1 up. Christiansen and Sogar, the scratch pair, quickly uh, brought parity to uh, the scoreline and as was the case back in 2016, Hans Christian Witting, who's closed it out for the Danes with a convincing victory against uh, Matthias Kicklitz in the uh, third men's single. What a great um, team tie this was. Very, very uh, entertaining, in my opinion. We do it all again tomorrow. Here is the uh, current standing in uh, Group B. Korea has won the match, the team tie against France. They have three individual matches, so they will also be on two wins and are secured of a uh, quarterfinal berth. So the match between Denmark and Korea will be a direct playoff for the seeding in the uh, knockout stage. Tomorrow we have uh, three more matches for you on here on uh, court two, Uber Cup tie starts at 8.30. India is uh, taking on Scotland and uh, another Uber Cup tie as one of the favorites, Japan. So against Indonesia and we finish off with uh, Thomas Cobb, Malaysia up against Canada. From all of us here in uh, Aarhus and myself, Steen Pedersen, bye for now.